everybody's Tyler here at Championships Check-In 3005 Robo Chargers. What a phenomenal season. Four blue banners, including that Texas State Championship just a little while ago. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far. Robo Chargers, absolutely phenomenal machine. Of course, we'll be doing that full note journey all the way through, but you got some really cool things going on, especially with some types of materials we'll be talking about. Of course, some of the code that goes into it and everything that goes in this phenomenal robot. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Hey, Zeus, let's start on the bottom of your robot here. You're doing some custom TPU wheels. So talk to me about uh, what they are. And then uh, I know you have a comparison to what you had before, so let's talk more about it. Yes, that's correct. So we're using the Rev Swerp modules, the um, Max. They, we changed out the regular Neo for the Vortex motor so we can directly drive it through. We only need one Spark Max now. But most, the main thing that we changed is we use TPU wheels. These are custom 3D printed. So we um, we designed these Mark Forge hubcaps right here. And then from there, we added the TPU rubber. The main thing is that it has some traction by having these little spikes. And these spikes are what's able to grip onto the carpet. And from gripping onto the carpet, it gives us, we're not wasting time spinning up the motor. We're not wasting time trying to um, make sure we have a grip. It automatically has a grip. Now these are different from the ones that Rev sells um, stock. These are the version twos. These are the version twos um, wheels. As you can see, it's slick rubber, similar to like a regular car tire, and it has the treads. It's all connected as one piece. But we saw that it would take some time before it would actually start spinning on the carpet. And so that's when we moved to these TPU wheels that have these extra grips. We change them out every two matches, but if we're really desperate, we can last for about three with these wheels. They just simply run down. But um, we did a lot of testing with that, and we used the regular um, aluminum hub um, gears right here, so that way they fit straight into the original squirt module, and it works fine. I know, so you got some printing uh, right over there as well, 200 printer. How long does that take to get a batch out occasionally? Uh, it takes about, I would say, 24 hours or so. Uh, it's sort of a long print, but the nice thing is we have made a large stack of them, so we have a lot of spares. We have about, like, four different... Um, for already built up in case we just need a very quick switch. Sure. And so we brought a printer with us so that way we're able to constantly just be printing and it more and more whenever we need it. And how long does it take to actually switch out a set? Because if you're in playoffs and you gotta make that quick switch, what's that looking That's like? That's the nice thing. Uh, because of how easy it is, swapping a, mod uh, swapping a wheel that is already made takes less than a minute. Awesome. So love all the thought process that's gone into it. Yeah, we're starting to see uh, a few teams now go that TPU route. I think we're starting to see more and more teams go that route as well too. So very cool to hear with that. Uh, uh, Anaya, let's talk about your uh, intake as well too. And uh, what's as it's gone through, talk to me about that note journey, how that works out, how'd you come up with the intake you're using and anything else you want to detail on it? So we have a two-way intake. Um, we raised our bumpers so that the note can go easier into the uh, robot. Um, on the side, we have two through beam sensors and that allows us to stop like whenever it passes like the resistor, kind of like a garage door, whenever there's something interfering, um, it stops the intake, running the intake. Um, and so, so the note is like not dragging on the ground. But we recently added an, an aluminum plate with Teflon tape um, so that there's no friction on the note. Um, so we go over here to our prototype, which is kind of like our, um, which are, it's also our spare. Whenever the note kind of, I'm gonna do it? Okay, yeah. Whenever the note travels through, it'll enter through here or enter through the back and kind of go into our pivot mechanism, which is kind of like a handover um, mechanism. And so it keeps that vertical compression on the note whenever it goes into the launcher. Uh. Hey, Zeus, talk more about your uh, launcher mechanism. Um, so our launcher system, we went through about 11 different iterations of it. We were doing a lot of testing and trying to figure out what, where exactly do we want to place the rollers. We knew that these rings, they're flexible and that you can easily bend them. And so we needed to make sure that we got enough contact with the ring itself to actually launch it out with the necessary um, velocity and direction. And so that's when we came up with this nice bulky design. What it does is we have four of these large um, three inch rollers on top, four, uh, another four at the bottom, and each, um, each two pairs, they're driven by one vortex. 
with these vortexes, since we don't have any extra shafts, we're saving space, we're saving weight with that, and we go directly into um, shooting these uh, rollers. Another thing is that we knew that we need we needed to make sure that we pivoted the roller so that way we would able to make shots from different um, areas of the field. And so that's why we ended up having to pit it on the side. And along with that, we have these build-up rollers that um, start spinning the um, note itself so that way it has already enough speed so when it reaches these, they already um, they automatically shoot as quickly as possible. So you're running four Neo Vortexes currently on that? Yes. So what made you determine like you needed that much power in regards to your shot? Uh, we've been, we did a lot of testing in terms of where we wanted the rollers to be. And so when we um, we initially had roll two rollers on the side, we had some like two at the top, two at the bottom, but that was not enough force, that wasn't like enough contact. So that's when we moved to using four rollers. And to power these four rollers, we realized that the vortex would be the best because we wouldn't be losing any sort of like, um, sort of uh, like speed or like we wouldn't be losing like having extra gears in there. So that way it just goes directly to powering the rollers and we're not wasting any sort of like energy elsewhere. A lot of teams that we've been talking to as they continue uh, learning more about the meta of this game and stuff, where their shot locations from has changed, or even their passing locations has changed a lot. Has that changed for Robochargers at all? Um, well, we, we haven't necessarily changed our positions, but we have added more positions. We have sure. a lookup table that we were able to use. Basically, we're pinpointing different areas on the field in terms of yards and what sort of angle, what sort of velocity they need. And the nice thing is that the vortexes, you automatically can change the, um, all those things. So we were able to make those changes very quickly and we're able to add more onto our lookup table. So that way it has one point and another point and if there's any sort of in between, it's able to guess accurately as possible. This, this material that we're running on our robot, um, it's called uh, SRPP, self-reinforced polypropylene. Sure. And so um, basically what this material is, it's uh, two different types of polypropylene woven together. So it's kind of like carbon fiber, um, but instead of uh, but instead, it's it's just polypropylene. Um, and so, what this allows us to do is have a um, uh, buys us more, manu uh, more manufacturing capability because SRPP is laser cuttable. It's also a Loctite resistant, um, has greater tensile strength than polycarbonate, and is less dense. Um, and so, what this allows us to do is uh, run the la uh, run our laser at the same time as our gantry mill, and so we're able to. Um, manufacture parts for our launcher at the same time as we're um, uh, making sprockets for our, uh, our uh, pivot. Um, and so uh, speaking about our pivot um, for our launcher, we have a really nifty uh, way of tensioning the chain uh, for, um, for our pivot. There's a turnbuckle right here. And so basically, as we tighten or loosen the turnbuckle, it, um, it pivots and it either tightens or loosens the tension on the chain. And so this is a really nifty way we um, tension the pivot on our launcher. Yeah, I mean, it's very much like a big package. When we were talking about this initially when I saw your robot, I'm like, wow, they just put carbon fiber everywhere on the <laughs> robot. But it's cool to hear about your choice of material, how you've gone through this well, too. Uh, one thing I just want to ask, Jesus, is there's anything in regards to like your climbing mechanism that you want to mention or talk about as we start to wrap up on your robot? Uh, yes. So what we wanted to do in the beginning of the season, we make sort of like a list of what we need to accomplish for the season's competition. And so one of the things was we wanted to be um, friendly towards other teams that are trying to climb so we can harmonize. So with that, we were like, we need something that's quick, but also um, friendly for others. So what we did is we decided to make this climber that works by us going on the side of the um, stage so that way we can climb and have space for another team to go in. So the way this works is that these are um, constant, comp um, constant force springs, so they're constantly wanting to go back straight in their position, but we force them down into this curve, so that way it holds its place. And then from there, there's this, um, we have a server right here that drives this 3D print. This 3D um, print locks the gear into place. Once we move this out the way and the gear is free to move, this automatically springs up by itself. But we also have a Neo motor driving that, so that way we can speed up the process. And then another thing is, the hook is directly with a string attached right here. So th that way we can reel it back in whenever we, um, we end the match. We also included a magnet here so that way when we slam into the chain, it, uh, um, it can uh, stay attached to the hook and we don't have to worry about trying to search for the hook because that is an initial challenge that we faced in our, one of our competitions. Last thing I want to wrap up with here is pass it back to Adrian and talk about uh, how you're doing your field vocalization. Uh, how does that work overall for your team? I mean, you think about Robochargers, I mean, you're, I mean, complete mode is not just your autonomous, but even your teleop, everything has just been going so smooth for your team. So walk me through a little bit what you're doing. Yeah, of course. Um, so 
While we're a really effective scorer near field, um, we're also a pretty effective uh, passer. And so we do this by um, having full field odometry. Sure. Um, and so um, through the, uh, when the camera sees uh, April tags, it basically corrects the odometry on, um, from the wheels. And so we're able to fuse um, positional data from April, April tags as well as um, just rotation and distance traveled from odometry. And so what this allows us to do is um, the robot knows its position wherever it is on the field. Um, and so what this, um, this allows us to um, have a really accurate pass. Um, so we really like to have our notes uh, protected in the, uh, in the amp protected zone, sure. right next in the corner of the field. And so what we did is we tuned the shot um, to basically always land in that zone. And so this allows us to, if we ever come a match where our strategy involves um, being a passer because we have effective scores on our alliance, yeah. uh, we can accurately and very quickly pass uh, notes in that protected zone. So it's much harder to steal. Um, and so that's, that's a part of our strategy as well. It's just being so um, flexible because as we can be a really effective scorer, but we can also be a really effective yeah, I mean, I think about your districts, right, with you and 2468 together and how you're able to just swap out, team up, and go in different routes. I thought that was a really cool thing. I think one of, I think a lot of people, when they watch this game, I think helped change the meta of this game as well, too. So really cool stuff with that. So Road Charts, congratulations on awesome scenes so far. I know you're looking for big things here at Championships. We can't wait to see how you do, but thanks for your time, taking the time to tell us more about your machine, and uh, what a great robot to inspire the community. We really appreciate it. Thanks Thank a you. lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.